Okay, today we're going to take a look at um, some discontinuities, how you go about naming them, how you go about identifying them. All right, so first, um, basically, I just want to make sure that you understand that discontinuities fall into two categories. All right, and then within those two categories, um, we can use words that will describe the type of discontinuity that is occurring, and it just describes it in a better way. All right, so we've got discontinuities fall into the two main categories of removable and non-removable. All right, now, if you have a removable discontinuity, all right, there's going to be a hole in the graph somewhere. That pretty much is straightforward. It's a clear-cut example, okay? If you have a non-removable discontinuity, you could have a jump going on, or you could have an infinite discontinuity, all right? And these um, below here, the hole, the jump, the infinite discontinuity, um, those are just like more specific names. I wouldn't necessarily even say names, but it's more specific. You can describe the discontinuity further than just saying removable, non-removable. All right, so um, the, these two are relatively clear-cut, but we'll demonstrate a picture here. If I've got a removable discontinuity, basically what that's saying is I've got a hole in the graph. All right, so you might have something that looks like, um, let's identify this at 2. All right, let's suppose our graph comes around, and then at 2 we've got the little hole, and it's going like that. All right, so some random function f of x, all right, I can very clearly see I've got a hole right here. All right, so because I have a hole, it's a removable discontinuity. All right, and I can very specifically say my removable discontinuity is located at x equals 2. All right, a discontinuity is a specific to a location on the graph. All right, now, um, some things that um, will help you identify when it's a hole. All right, it's often said that you can think of this as like literally like, say, a hole in the road. And if it can be filled or patched and then it makes the function continuous or the road would be fixed, all right, then it is a removable discontinuity. So it's kind of like a good way to look at that. All right, um, now the non-removable discontinuity that is a jump. All right, again, this one is pretty clear cut straightforward, you're going to have a jump in the graph. All right, so um, let's make this one at one this time. Let's say we've got um, our graph coming along here. All right, maybe say like such with a hole right there, or I should say just an open dot, and then maybe the rest of the graph like that. All right, so clearly we have a jump going on here. In order for me to draw this picture, I would draw this section. I would have to lift my pencil and come over here and draw this. All right, this would be an example of a non-removable discontinuity, and I can more specifically say I have a jump. It is occurring at x equals 1. That's the location that it's occurring at. So you always want to specify where it's occurring at. It's occurring at x equals 1. It is re non-removable, and it more specifically can be called a jump. Okay, now for this infinite discontinuity one, there's more scenarios or more cases that can be looked at. Okay, so let's look at that here. Um, we've got our non-removable discontinuity, all right, and if I specifically have an infinite discontinuity going on, okay, what exactly is this all about? All right, now I do want to note that um, an infinite discontinuity um, also is can also be called an essential discontinuity, depending on the book, depending on the website that you're reading here. So basically those two names are the exact same thing. All right, now in general, you know that you've got one of these infinite discontinuities if the left or the right side limits are infinite or they don't exist. All right, so that's kind of how you know you've got an infinite discontinuity going on here. All right, I've got three little different scenarios of pictures that you might encounter. All right, so let's suppose here at x equals 2, I've got a graph coming like such with a closed dot right there. Okay, this would be an example of a non-removable discontinuity that could be classified as an infinite discontinuity. All right, um, it is occurring at x equals 2. All right, so depending on how specific you want to be here, like I've got an infinite discontinuity at x equals 2. All right, now this is because my limit from the right does not exist. All right, my limit from the left does exist. All right, it would be whatever y value that would be at. Okay, but the function, this function that I've drawn here, all right, is not defined for x values greater than 2. All right, well, there's no function over there, so it's not defined for x values greater than 2. Therefore, my limit from the right does not exist. All right, so that's what qualifies it as an infinite discontinuity. 
Okay, um, now let's take another different type of picture here. Let's go ahead and stick with two. That seems to be pretty popular. Um, let's do a little vertical asymptote right there. Let's suppose my graph maybe has an open dot right here, does something like this. And then on this side, maybe it does something like this. All right, very, very rough sketch here. Okay, this would also be an infinite discontinuity. All right, it's gonna be a non-removable infinite discontinuity. Um, and again, it is occurring at x equals two, we always want to specify that. Okay, um, now why? Okay, my limit from the left comes in and has a value. All right, my limit as x approaches two from the left does have a specific value, all right? But my limit as x approaches two from the right is infinite, all right? So because it's infinite, that qualifies this as an infinite discontinuity. All right, your third, um, example that I would like to talk about is how about a really common graph that we often see f of x equals 1 over x. Okay, um, really rough sketch of that one here, something along the lines that looks kind of like that. All right, for a rough sketch without using a calculator here, we're, we've, we've got a picture that looks like this. Okay, now this is going to also be classified as a non-removable discontinuity, more specifically an infinite discontinuity. All right, and this time it's an infinite discontinuity at x equals zero. Okay, it's at x equals zero. All right, now um, because looking at this, my left and right side are infinite, left or right side is infinite or they don't exist. In this case, all right, we can say that as I'm coming from the left, all right, and approaching zero, it's negative infinity. My limit as I approach zero from the right would be positive infinity, okay? So then it would qualify. Now, I have more recently um, read on some websites where I have seen this referred to as an infinite jump. Okay, I've not seen it in my textbooks, but I have seen this on a website. And I kind of really like that description, all right? Clearly, it is a jump of such because I'm, I've got to draw this section. I have to lift my pencil to come over here and draw this section. So I've got a jump going on there. And if I classify it as an infinite jump, all right, then I get the idea that I, you know, part of my function is either going to positive or negative infinity. All right, so um, just, just a thing that I just recently saw on a website, and I kind of like that. All right, but for the most part, what I would do is I would call this a non-removable discontinuity. All right, it's an infinite discontinuity at x equals zero. And those are about the three only scenarios that you're going to see, all right, or similar ones to them. All right, now, this overall concept here, you might be asked to look at a graph and do some identifying, all right, of your discontinuities. All right, this is a, com a common question that I ask students in my room. Okay, here's a random graph, some function f of x, all right. Um, I'm asking you to identify where the discontinuities are located at. So you would have to tell me x equals and then where they're located at. And identify the type and slash name of the discontinuity. All right, I want very specific answers, okay, on this. So I would want a student to write um, something along the lines of discontinuities are at, all right, that's kind of a general definition. Where are they at? They are at, well, let's look our graph over. Okay, let's go left to right across the graph right here at x equals negative 3. Okay, I clearly have a hole, all right? And we said when it is a hole that it is a removable discontinuity. So I always classify removable, non-removable first. So I would say removable. And then I would go slash hole, just being more specific, saying, okay, yes, it's removable, and I got a hole going on right there. All right, continuing on, looking at my graph right here at x equals 1. I've got another discontinuity, all right? Clearly, it's a jump, all right? And we said a jump was non-removable, all right? So that's what I would write down first. I would write down non-removable. And then to be more specific to tell what's going on, I would say, okay, I got a jump going on right there. All right, continuing on, looking at my graph right here around x equals 4. Okay, I've got a vertical asymptote, and my graph is doing this, you know, going to positive infinity here, going to negative infinity here. So again, I've got a non-removable discontinuity. 
and then if I wanted to be more specific I would call this an infinite discontinuity. Alright, so just kind of an example of what you might have to do with this. You're going to have to note where these discontinuities occur. It's going to be a very important concept for later on doing things in calculus and, and trying to um, just answer various questions. Knowing anything and everything you can about the graph is going to be very, very helpful. Alright, so thanks for watching. And if you liked the video, go ahead and give me a like. And if you're needing lots of help on math, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Thanks.